Hello, my name is Grant Kramer, and I am a professor emeritus at the University of Nevada, Reno. Today's episode is My Backyard Vineyard, Season 1, Episode 3, Problems I Encountered in the First Year. So these are the problems that I encountered in the first year. I addressed in the previous video the problem with the poor growth that we got during the season due to heat injury in the initial transport of the, the grafted cuttings from the nursery. And then the late start of planting, which slowed their growth. In addition, I had problems with weeds and I had planted these this vineyard in a previously grown lawn. Therefore, I had lots of grass around which needed to be mowed, but it also needed to be kept away from the vines. And that was done simply by pulling the weeds, an easy solution. I did encounter one broken vine due to my power mower, which had a power cord on it uh, that accidentally hit one of the vines or got caught in one of the vines and snapped it almost completely off. But I was able to save it. And in this video, I will show you some pictures and tell you what I did. In addition, in this video, I will talk about the ubiquitous problem of powdery mildew and how I treat it, giving you some examples. And following videos, I will talk about the insects that I encountered. I found a blue-green sharpshooter on my vines it's a problem because it sucks juices out of the vines and in the process, it transmits a disease from a bacteria called Xylella fastidiosa. It then causes Pierce's disease. Another time I found a cutworm, or at least I think it's a cutworm. I will show you pictures of that in future video. And in addition, I found a bluegrass webworm and a woodland skipper both of which are known feeders on grass. And since I have a lawn, I'm calling them a lawn pest. I'm not sure that they were any problems for my grapes. And then finally, in a separate video, I will show some symptoms of iron deficiency that I encountered during the course of the season. This was largely due to the alkaline soil conditions. And I will discuss the treatment for that, both on the leaves and in the soil. So as I mentioned earlier, the grapevines were heat stressed during transport down to my home from the nursery up in Sacramento, where temperatures were well over 100 degrees during the transport process. Once arrived here, they were cooler in my conditions, but the plants had already struggled. This is an example of one of the vines that actually was alive when I planted it that died during the summertime. So in this case, I had to request a replacement vine or several replacement vines from the nursery who kindly sent them to me and I replaced them with a new vine. I'm sorry I don't have good visuals this year because I didn't think clearly enough to make images of all the problems and videos of them. But I promise in the future, I will do that. In another situation, I am mowing the grass between the vines. And in my case, I have an electric mower, which has a power cord to it. A better one would be one that was battery operated, but mine is a little bit older and that's what I had. Unfortunately, I was a little too vigorous in my mowing and was not aware of my power cord reaching behind me and grabbing hold of a vine. In particular, only one vine, fortunately, this vine. And if you look on the left-hand side, you can see what would be normally my trunk with the cyan attached to the rootstock. And in this case, above that grafted zone, the vine was snapped almost to complete breakage, but there was still a remaining little bit of it there that you can see, for example, on the left-hand side, which meant that there was still phloem contact. And I thought, well, I might be able to save this vine rather than toss it out and replace it. So I have done an experiment. First of all, I realigned the vine back on top of it 
so that the hormones in the upper part of the plant would transmit down through the phloem and hopefully heal that wound, very similar to what a graft would do. So I aligned the broken piece and dripped melted candle wax on the vine to hold the two pieces together in one place. So if you look here on the right, I'll show you where the break was based on this red line that's appeared that's where the break in it was. And so both portions of the vine up above would have died. And there would have been no buds for this vine to grow Pinot Noir. And what I would end up getting is just rootstock growing up from the base. You can see now where that line was. You can see the wax that I built around that vine to hold it together. Over the course of the season, of course, we live in a cool area with a bit of marine layer. So unfortunately, we get enough moisture there and it's cool enough that powdery mildew can grow. This is a photograph of some powdery mildew beginning to grow on some of my leaves. There's a treatment that I need to do to take care of this. For this year, I just used elemental sulfur. Okay, for treatment of elemental sulfur on your vines for powdery mildew, you want to use some wettable powder, as in this package right here made by Bonide. Then you want to make it up in a solution that is approximately one to three tablespoons per gallon, depending on the amount of problem you have with powdery mildew. You have to be careful that the Wettable sulfur is well suspended because it tends to settle at the bottom of the container and therefore it won't be in even strength when you spray it. And I like to use this power sprayer because it produces a good spray across the entire vine and wets the entire leaf and gets into the cracks of the bark, etc., to get good penetration of the sulfur all over the plant. When spraying, you can use it like this, and it will coat the vine completely till it's fully drenched. After the elemental sulfur has dried, you can see it leaves a little bit of a white coating on the leaves. Once you spray a vine with elemental sulfur, the elemental sulfur will inhibit the powdery mildew from growing and thus reduce the problems you have with powdery mildew. To know more about the other powdery mildew issues you can have, then I encourage you to see one of my other videos on powdery mildew. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, then please like it on my YouTube channel, as it'll give the opportunity for more people to see it with more likes. Have a great day.